Hola, mi gente. Miss Malcolm Hughes here. Welcome. Welcome back. Today is a very exciting video because not only will I be telling you all the books I'm reading in April, I'll also be talking about the Booker shortlist and then also the Penn Faulkner winner. I've talked about those in other videos, but now it's time to see where we are with them all. Let's just get right into the video. So my list for April is kind of long, but we're just gonna push through. Some of them I've already read, so I'm already off to a great start. The first one is The Inmate by Frieda McFadden. I know the girls love Frieda McFadden. I'm finally getting around to her because I really have been in a thriller mood. So I've already read this one, honestly, not going to give my opinion now, but here's what it's about. As a nurse practitioner at a maximum security prison, Brooke Sullivan is taught three crucial rules. Treat all prisoners with respect, never reveal any personal information, and never ever become too friendly with the inmates. But nobody knows that Brooke has already broken the rules. Nobody knows about her intimate connection to Shane Nelson, one of the penitentiary's most notorious and dangerous inmates. They certainly don't know that Shane was Brooke's high school sweetheart, the star quarterback, the golden boy, who's serving a life sentence for a series of grisly murders, or that Brooke's testimony was what put him there. But Shane knows. He knows more than anyone, and he will never forget. <laughs> These descriptions, y'all. These descriptions. But that is what the inmate is about. Next up, we have another book that I've already read. And that is Soul Ties by Miss Candace. And y'all gonna start putting respect on urban fiction. <laughs> All right. And here is the summary for, or the description for Soul Ties. From the moment his eyes met hers, there was something. Time stood still. The world around them vanished in electricity instant electricity. Immediately, she owned him in an inexplicable way he couldn't quite understand. He couldn't escape her, not in his dreams, and soon, not even in his reality. He was the man that made her soar. There was nothing in the world she wanted more than him, absolutely nothing. His touch made her levitate. When she was with him, she was limitless. He felt like home. Sadly, he was home for someone else. Soul tie, an intense connection between two people that binds them together mentally, spiritually, and physically. And so that is our description for soul ties. Now let's get into a book where I actually have a physical copy and I've started but haven't finished yet. And that is David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. And I am reading this so that I can read Demon Copperhead, which is like a new telling of that in modern terms based on one of the characters. So I figured I should read the classic first. And here's what it's about. David Copperfield is the quintessential novel by England's most loved novelist. Based in part on Dickens' own life, it is the story of a young man's journey from an unhappy and impoverished childhood to the discovery of his vocation as a successful novelist. Among its gloriously vivid cast of characters, he encounters his tyrannical stepfather, Mr. Murdstone, his formidable aunt, Betsy Trotwood, the eternally humble yet treacherous Uriah Heep, the frivolous enchanting Dora, and one of literature's great comic creations, magnificently impecunious Mr. Micawber, a character resembling Dickens' own father. In David Copperfield, the novel he described as his favorite child, Dickens drew revealingly on his own experiences to create one of his most exuberant and enduringly popular works filled with tragedy and comedy in equal measure. You know what? I've actually started this one and for it to be a classic, chapter one was actually really good. So I'm actually looking forward to finishing this. So next up, we have another book that y'all have just been ranting or raving about all over the internet. And that is The House of Eve by Sadiqa Johnson. I'm actually a few chapters into this book as well, but here's what it's about. 1950s Philadelphia, 15-year-old Ruby Parasol is on track to becoming the first in her family to attend college. But a taboo love affair threatens to pull her back down into the, <laughs> into the poverty and desperation that has been passed on to her like a birthright. Eleanor Quarles arrives in Washington, D.C. with ambition and secrets. When she meets the handsome William Pride at Howard University, they fall madly in love. 
but William hails from one of DC's elite wealthy black families and his parents don't let just anyone into their fold. Eleanor hopes that a baby will make her finally feel at home in William's family and grant her the life she has been searching for. But having a baby and fitting in is easier said than done. With their stories colliding in the most unexpected of ways, Ruby and Eleanor will both make decisions that shape the trajectory of their lives. So, like I said, I'm a few chapters in. I am enjoying it. And so, so far, it's looking like April will be a good reading month, but we shall see. And because I've already finished Soul Ties and am invested in the characters and what will happen, I will also be reading Saint Baptiste. And here is the description. In his new position as head of the Baptiste family business, Saint faces many challenges, but nothing could have prepared him for the challenges that came with dealing with the alluring Naoki child. She was the insoluble problem his big brother Jihad talked about, a problem that couldn't be handled with a phone call, a meeting, or by simply emptying his clip. Saint thought he'd never be faced with a problem he couldn't handle, especially where a woman was concerned. But he quickly learned that Naoki wasn't just some woman. She was much, much more than that. Naoki was trapped in what felt like a never-ending cycle with the same man. Except he wasn't the same man. Not exactly, anyway. In many ways, he was. But in very distinctive ways, he wasn't. Saint Baptiste belonged in a category of his own. He made her feel in ways no man ever had. In ways she vowed to never feel again. But at the end of the night... When she'd awaken to a cold, empty bed, she'd be reminded of the ways in which he was just like the men before. For a while, him being the same didn't bother her. But when feelings got involved and she found herself wanting to venture outside of the box she put herself in, things got complicated. So I haven't started this one yet. I made the mistake of looking at someone's comment review and they said that this one was better than the first one. And so I'm trying not to have hopes attached to that, but we shall see. I'm looking forward to reading it for sure. All right. So the next books I'm hoping to read this month are actually the Booker shortlist. That list came out, depending on when I post this, <laughs> but the list came out on April 9th. So that would either be today or yesterday, um, but it came out on April 9th. And honestly, I'm a little disappointed because some of the books that I was most looking forward to from the long list didn't make the short list, but that's okay. I'm still going to read them. I said that I would read them and try to predict the winner. And I am. The long, no, the winner of the International Booker Prize will be announced on May 21st. So these I will be reading in April and May, but let's just get right into them. For those of you who are looking for a full description of the book, watch my video with the long list. I read the full description for all of them, but for the purposes of this video and not making it too long, I'm just going to do the like one sentence summary that the booker has written up for each book on the shortlist. So here we go. So the first book we have is Not a River by Selva Amata. And it says, Selva Amata's novel is the finest expression yet of her compelling style and singular vision of rural, rural Argentina. And so I think that I found her first, initially I found this book interesting because I did go online to my library and check out one of her older works. Um, she sounded like a very intriguing writer. So I'm not too mad at this one. So I am going to give it a read. Unfortunately, this one doesn't come out until early May, um, but I'll still be able to read it before the Booker Prize winner is announced. Next up, we have Made It to 10 by Wang Sukyung, an epic multi-generational tale that threads together a century of Korean history. And so I do remember thinking that this one sounded interesting and I did want to read this one. So I'm excited to see this one on the short list. Next up, we have What I'd Rather Not Think About by Hente Poshuma. And it's a deeply moving exploration of grief told in brief, precise vignettes and full of gentle melancholy and surprising humor. And I did remember thinking that this one was interesting. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to reading this one for sure. The other book on the shortlist is Crooked Plow by Itamar Vieira Jr. It's a fascinating and gripping story about the lives of substance farmers in Brazil's poorest region. Again, that that one sounded interesting. I don't recall being super excited to read it, but there were some aspects that I was like definitely interested in. Or was I really excited about this one? 
I don't know, but either way, we're reading it. So I'll let you all know how it pans out. All right. Our next book on the list is Kairos by Jenny Erpenbeck. It's an intimate and devastating story of the path of two lovers through the ruins of a relationship set against the backdrop of a seismic period in European history. I do remember not wanting to read this one. <laughs> At least I think, because I think it was like older man, younger woman, they have some like torrid love affair. And I remember not being very excited about it, but I'm going to read it and it might blow me away. All right. And then the last book we have on the short list is The Details by Ia Ginberg. An exhilarating, provocative prose, Ia Ginberg reveals an intimate and powerful celebration of what it means to be human. So I'm going to read all of the books on the short list. Again, I'm going to go in with an open mind. You know, the descriptions can be one thing. But we'll see if the book lives up to it. And here, you know, it's the full list, some books that didn't make it from the long list to the short list that, you know, some of these I was really looking forward to. I'm actually really surprised to see that A Dictator Cost didn't make it. I thought that this one might make it. Um, I think Silver Bone sounded interesting. Sympathy I wasn't really into. So yeah, unfortunately, these didn't make it. And some of them I may still read in the future, but just not at this time. Moving on. And if y'all recall, I came on here not long ago to talk about the Penn Faulkner shortlist. I had originally talked about the long list and I talked about the shortlist and the books that had made it and how none of the books that I wanted to read had made it. <laughs> but of the books that had made it to the shortlist, the one that I said I would probably pick up at some point is what happened to Ruthie Ramirez. And that's actually the one that won. So I'm so excited for that. Um, it's actually available on Kindle Unlimited. So I will probably get to that in the next couple of months, maybe um, add it into the reading rotation when I have time. But congratulations to Claire Jimenez, like a huge accomplishment. So I'm sure the book is great and I am looking forward to reading it. But that's it, y'all. Those are the books on my April TBR. A lot to get through. Like I said, some of them will carry over until May. I also still have the other books that I'm reading, still reading Shouting in the Fire, still reading The Blood Trials or The Blood Gift, still reading The Blood Gift, and also still reading Jubilee. So those are still coming. Um, those are still carryovers from February. I've actually gotten back into The Blood Gift. Um, so that one may be coming sooner. But that's it. As always, I am Ms. Malcolm Hughes, the one who believes that books are sometimes better than people. And until the next one, please remember to give time time, to be kind to each other, and to have the very best day of your life on purpose. Peace. Adios. Ciao.